Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. In today's module, we are going to talk about services on the Azure data platform. Imagine you are a data engineer working for an organization that's starting to explore cloud capabilities. Executives have asked the network infrastructure team to explain the benefits and drawbacks of running IT operations in Azure. The network team approaches you for information about Azure data services. Could you answer their high-level questions? Well, this module will help you to achieve that objective. In this module, you will learn contrast structured data with non-structured data, explore common Azure data platforms technologies and learn when to use them, and lastly, we will understand technologies that support the common Azure data platform technologies. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Confusion, because Azure provides many data platform technologies to meet the needs of common data varieties. It's worth reminding ourselves of the two broad data types, structured and unstructured. So which kind of data type you should use and when to use? So let's first learn what is the difference between structured and unstructured data. The very first we are gonna discuss about the structured data and then later on we will discuss about unstructured data. In relational database systems like Microsoft SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, Azure SQL Data Warehouses, data structure is defined at design time. Data structure is defined in the form of tables. This means it's designed before any information is loaded into the system. The data structure includes the relational model, table structure, column width, and the data types. Relational system reacts slowly to change in the data requirements because the structured database needs to change every time a data requirement changes. When new columns are added, you might need to bulk update all existing records to populate the new column throughout the table. Also, you should remember that relational systems typically use a query language such as Transact SQL or T-SQL. This is all about the structured data. Now let's talk about the unstructured data. Examples of unstructured data include binary, audio, and image files. It can be video, it can be your emails, it can be your social media data. Non-structured data is stored in non-relational systems, commonly called unstructured or no SQL systems. In non-relational systems, the data structure isn't defined at design time like we used to do in the structured database. And data is typically loaded in its raw format. That means we don't need to perform anything. We can simply dump the data into the system. The data structure is defined only when the data is read. That means when we are going to query the data from our non-structured database or the system, then only we are going to define its structure. The difference in the definition points gives you flexibility to use the same source data for different outputs. Non-relational systems can also support semi-structured data such as JSON file formats. The open source world offers four types of NoSQL databases. The first one is key value store, that means store key value pairs of data in table structure. Second one would be document database, stores document that are tagged with metadata to aid document searches. Third one would be the graph database, that means finds relationship between data points by using structure that's composed of vertices and edges. And lastly is your column database stores data based on columns rather than rows. Columns can be defined at the query time, allowing flexibility in the data that's returned performantly. Now that we have reviewed different data types, now let's look at common data platform technologies that facilitate the storage, processing, and querying of the different data types. Azure storage accounts are the base storage type within Azure. Azure Storage offers a very scalable object store for data objects and file system services in the cloud. 
It can also provide a messaging store for reliable messaging or it can act as a NoSQL store. Azure Storage offers four different kinds of configurations as you can see on your screen. The very first is Azure Blob. It's a scalable object store for text and binary data. Azure Files is a managed file share for cloud or on-premise deployments. Azure Queue, it's a messaging store for reliable messaging between application components. And lastly, the Azure Table, it's a NoSQL store for no schema storage for structured data. You can use Azure Storage as the storage basis when you are provisioning a data platform technology such as Azure Data Lake Storage and HD Insight. But you can also provision Azure Storage for standalone use. For example, you provision an Azure Blob Storage either as standard storage in the form of magnetic disk storage or a premium storage in the form of solid state drives. Now let's discuss about the storage in Azure Data Lake Storage. Azure Data Lake Storage is a Hadoop compatible data repository that can store any size or type of data. Storage services is available as Generation 1, Gen 1 or Generation 2 or Gen 2. Data Lake Storage Gen 1 users don't have to upgrade to Gen 2 but they forego some of the benefits. That means Azure Gen 2 offers a lot more benefits as compared to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 1. Data Lake Storage Gen 2 users take advantages of Azure Blob Storage, a hierarchical file system and performance tuning that helps them process big data analytics solutions. In Gen 2, developers can access data through either the Blob API or the Data Lake File API. Gen 2 can also access a storage layer for a wide range of compute platforms including Azure Databricks, Hadoop and Azure HD Insight. But data doesn't need to be loaded into the platform. Where to use the Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2? Well, that's quite an interesting question. So let me answer that. Data Lake Storage is designed to store massive amount of data for big data analytics. For example, Contoso's Life Sciences is a cancer research center that analyzes petabytes of genetic data, patient data, and records of related sample data. Data Lake Storage Gen 2 reduces computation times, making the research faster and less expensive. The compute aspect that sits above the storage can vary. The aspect can include platforms like HD Insights, Hadoop, and Azure Databricks. Now let's move further and discuss about the Azure Cosmos DB. Well, Azure Cosmos DB is a globally distributed multimodal database. You can deploy it by using several API models. That is SQL API, MongoDB API, Cassandra API, Gremlin API, or even the Table API. Because of the multimodal architecture of Azure Cosmos DB, you benefit from each model's inherent capabilities. For example, you can use MongoDB for semi-structured data, Cassandra for white column, or Gremlin for graph databases. When you move your data from SQL, MongoDB, or Cassandra to Azure Cosmos DB, applications that are built using the SQL, MongoDB, or Cassandra DB API will continue to operate. Now, the question comes, when to use the Azure Cosmos DB? Well, Deploy Azure Cosmos DB when you need a NoSQL database of the supported API models at a planet scale and with low latency performance. Currently, Azure Cosmos DB supports 5 nines uptime, that is 99.999%. It can support response times below 10 milliseconds when it provisioned correctly. Key features. Well, Azure Cosmos DB sports 99.999% uptime as I just discussed before. You can invoke a regional failover by using programming or the Azure portal. And Azure Cosmos DB database will automatically fail over if there is a regional disaster. By using multi-master replication in Azure Cosmos DB, you can often achieve a response time of less than one second from anywhere in the world. Azure Cosmos DB is guaranteed to achieve a response time of less than 10 milliseconds for reads and writes. Lastly, to maintain the consistency of the data in Azure Cosmos DB, your engineering team should introduce a new set of consistency level that address the unique challenges of planet scale solutions. Consistency levels include strong bounded scaleness, session, consistent prefix, and eventual.
Now we are going to discuss about Azure SQL Database. Azure SQL Database is managed relational database service. It supports structures such as relational data and unstructured formats such as a spatial and XML data. SQL Database provides online transaction processing that is OLTP that can scale on demand. You will also find the comprehensive security and availability that you appreciate in Azure Database Services. Now question comes when to use Azure SQL Database. Use SQL Database when you need to scale up and scale down OLTP system on demand. SQL Database is a good solution when your organization want to take advantage of Azure security and availability features. Organizations that choose SQL Database also avoid the risk of capital expenditure and of increasing operational spending on complex on-premise systems. SQL Databases can be more flexible than as on-premise SQL Server solution because you can provision and configure it in minutes. Even more, SQL Database is backed up by the Azure Service Level Agreement. Azure SNPs Analytics is a cloud-based data platform that brings together enterprise data warehousing and big data analytics. It can process massive amount of data and answers complex business questions with a limitless scale. As you can see on your screen, there are the different features of Azure SNPs Analytics. It would provide you powerful insights, unified experience, instant clarity, and unmatched security. Data loads can increase the processing time for on-premise data warehousing descriptive analytics solutions. Organizations that face the issue might look to cloud-based alternative to reduce processing time and release business intelligence reports faster. But many organizations first consider scaling up on on-premise servers. As this approach reaches its physical limits, they look for a solution on petabyte scale that doesn't involve complex installations and configurations. The SQL pools capability of Azure SNPs Analytics can meet this need. Let's talk about the key features over here. On your screen, you can see the key service capabilities of SNPs Analytics, which includes unified analytics platform and enterprise data warehousing solutions, code free hybrid data integration, cloud native HTAP, integrated AI and BI. Serverless and dedicated options, data lake exploration, deeply integrated Apache Spark and SQL queries, choices of your own language, and lastly, end to end managed and monitoring. SQL Pool uses massive parallel processing, that is MPP, to quickly run queries across petabytes of data. Because of the storage is separated from the compute nodes, you can scale the compute nodes independently to meet any demand at any point of time. Applications, sensors, monitoring devices, and gateways broadcast continuous event data known as data streams. Streaming data is high volume and has a lighter payload than non-streaming systems. Data engineers use Azure SNPs Analytics to process streaming data and respond to data anomalies in real time. You can use stream analytics for Internet of Things, that is IoT monitoring, web logs, remote patient monitoring, and point of scale systems. You can see the whole structure over here on your screen. We have different IoT gateways or even the event production applications. Then we can ingest them into our stream analytics using Event Hub, IoT Hub or Blobs which are going to act as event queuing or stream ingestion. Then we use the stream analytics to get as input from those devices and there we can either perform machine learning or we can again storage and present an action using data lake, Cosmos DB, SQL DB or Power BI for the data visualization or even we can use service bus, Azure functions etc to automate and kick off workflows. And you should use this if your organization must respond to data events in real time or analyze large batches of data in a continuous time-bound stream. These are some of the IoT capabilities in Azure Stream Analytics. You can pause your screen and have a look. Now let's talk about the Azure HD Insight. Azure HD Insights provides technologies to help you ingest, process and analyze big data. It supports batch processing, data warehousing, IoT, and data science. Key features of Azure HD Insights is Hadoop, 
which includes Apache Hive, HBase, Spark, and Kafka. Hadoop stores data in file systems. Spark stores data in memory. This difference in storage makes Spark about 100 times faster. HBase is a NoSQL database built on Hadoop. It's commonly used for search engines. HBase offers automatic failover. Storm is a distributed real-time streaming analytics solution. And lastly, Kafka. Kafka is an open source platform that's used to compose data pipelines. It offers message queue functionality which allows users to publish or subscribe to real-time data streams. Ingesting data. So as a data engineer, use Hive to run ETL operations on the data you are ingesting or orchestrate Hive queries in Azure Data Factory. Now we are going to discuss some of the other Azure data services that is Databricks, Data Factory and Azure Catalog. Databricks is a serverless platform that optimized for Azure. It provides one-click setup, streamlined workflows, and an interactive workplace for Spark-based applications. We use Azure Databricks majorly for prep and train process. Databricks adds capabilities to Apache Spark, including fully managed Spark clusters and an interactive workplace. In Databricks notebooks, you will find similar programming tools such as R, Python, Scala, and SQL. Role-based security in Azure Active Directory and Databricks provides enterprise-grade security. In case of Data Factory, Data Factory is basically the ELT tool that we use to ingest data into our own data stores. Data Factory is a cloud integration service. It orchestrates the movement of data between various data stores. As a data engineer, you can create data-driven workflows in the cloud to orchestrate and automate data movement and data transformation. Use Data Factory to create and schedule data-driven workflows, which we call pipelines, that can ingest data from data stores. Now, lastly, we are going to talk about data catalog. Analysts, data scientists, developers, and others use data catalog to discover, understand, and consume data sources. Data catalog features a crowdsourcing model of metadata and annotations. In this central location, and organizations users contribute their knowledge to build a community of data sources that are owned by the organization you should also remember that data catalog is fully managed cloud service users discover and explore data sources and they help the organization document information about their data sources now let's check questions for this video Please pause your screen and help me to answer these questions. I'm going to provide you answers for all these questions in our next video. I hope you liked today's video. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't forget to let us know. And don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates.